Hi, everybody. My name is Daniel Garzón Chavez. I'm the corresponding author of the paper, Cycle Threshold Values in the Context of Multiply RT PCR Testing for SARS CoV 2. Real time PCR is the gold standard for COVID 19 diagnosis. For low and middle income countries, this test is expensive, time consuming, and not easily available. RT-PCR is used in epidemiological control as a dichotomic test, considering it negative when there is no amplification and positive whenever particles of the virus are detected. This is a very sensitive test, which means that RT-PCR is able to detect particles of the virus, even if it is not longer active. The cycle threshold values of the RT-PCR is defined as the number of cycles needed for a fluorescent signal to be detected and is correlated with viral load, therefore viral dynamics, such as replication and transmissibility. Thus, cycle threshold values might be used to inform when, whether patients label as positive might be actually infectious. In our study, we followed 118 hospitalized patients applying periodical RT-PCR tests even after discharge. We analyze how many days were needed to present cycle threshold values of 233, which is one of the thresholds to consider viral particles as not active, that is, not infected. Our population had a median age of 49 years with a male majority. Cycle threshold values increased periodically with time, suggesting that SARS CoV 2 is active at the beginning of the presence of symptoms, or even before, in general, or results aligned with the isolation recommendations for the Center of Disease Control and Prevention of the United States, which suggests a time frame of 30 days to ensure that a patient is not longer infectious. Regardless, we found that 11% of patients might be potential infections even after the 30 of symptoms onset. We hope that this study will encourage use of RT-PCR cycle threshold values as a useful tool for evaluating COVID-19 status surveillance and follow-up. This study was done by of University San Francisco de Quito in cooperation with Hospital IES Quito Sur, Universidad Central del Ecuador, and the University of Kansas from the United States.